are squawking dead. No more Christopher Walken intro, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. We're finally covering Fear the Walking Dead episodes one and two, and we're here with Carol Ashley Weidman. Welcome back. And then Rachel Burt, last but not least. I think the first thing I want to kind of cover, because this is going to be a this is going to be a long one, so buckle up, kiddos. Is Ashley, where you been? What you been up to? It's been a while. <laughs> Apparently, have kids. I don't know. Yeah, right? No, <laughs> your family. That's pretty much my life is my children, and now they're they're out of school. It's uh, all day, full throttle, zero to sixty in the morning, <laughs> all day, <laughs> every day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, yeah. So now that they've been out of school and yeah, because I think the last time we saw you was the um, the finale, right? I think we had yeah. everybody on for a little while at least. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah yep. It's been a while. I know. Yeah. A lot, lot's been going on since then uh, with, that we've been reporting. And just to remind everybody, if you're on any of these streams, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc., uh, do us a favor on YouTube facebook just give us a like um follow us um like this video comment on it if you feel like you missed something from the instagram podcast which is entirely possible because we often have to restart that thing most importantly if you do listen to the audio podcast give us a rating or something like that it really really helps us i think the few platforms that we have that you can rate us on or i know that you can do it on stitcher um and obviously itunes so help us out help us grow and then we'll be ubiquitous um beyond that we still have rachel's charity through august so i'm going to be pu yes. pushing that every show um at the beginning at the top of the show if you head to the episode description you can get the link now for youtube and facebook or if you're on instagram after the show head over to cosmo mom 09 uh the link is in her description and you'll be able to get her to full alpha status of shaved head and all and we will do the uh, broadcast of this do you want to do this on squawking dead or do you want to do this on your own instagram feed because I think either way um, we can make it work. <laughs> I might have to do it on, on my own uh, just because I'm going to have a friend of mine do it. So I'll have to do it when she's available. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. On your own time. Well, well more like her time. <laughs> her time. Pff, yeah. Her time is valuable. <laughs> it I'm is. Shave your hair. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 can we all shave your head? <laughs> I'll, I'll go out you guys, there. I, if you guys can all get here in August. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take a spirit flight with no <laughs> luggage because then they'll charge me. Well, I bet spirit would charge you if you had um, no luggage. It was like a no luggage fee, like just, just yeah, like probably. a middle the middle finger they'll fee. Find a <laughs> find I shave Stephen Ogg's mustache. I can shave your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It'll be easy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> She's a pro now. It, it kind of reminds me of like when I, when I made my wife shave the back of my head head once it, she had nightmares i'm telling you she oh, had no. recoil she's so nervous <laughs> I, and it's not uncommon like yeah. if you ask a woman to shave a guy's face it just sends chills down their smiles like i would if i cut you and like, right i'm um, so afraid i could see that <laughs> I'm used we, to it. That's what I do. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, get, just get in there, Rach. Get, just get in I, there. I probably scare people more than they scare me because I'm coming up, <laughs> coming at them like this. <laughs> this <is> Rachel scissor hands. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh my god, no! <laughs> you, you you'd be wearing like a, a commander helmet, like a hard helmet. <laughs> oh, we gotta go in there. Yeah, a cigar in your mouth, like between the scissors, like come on back. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into this thing guys once and for all um once and for all <laughs> anyway so okay so the first thing i wanted to talk about was the insane level of promotion that they had for the show uh prior to and now after um just to give you a kind of a recap of what they did was um they had each of the character like the main characters um do like the we're here to help walkie talkie videos they had the um the action videos where they're jumping on yeah, a trampoline they were jumping up and down oh, exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh the character cards like the character feature cards where they show like smoke and stuff and then they show june and john right. dory and right. etc you know which is really cool mm -hmm. and then last but not least right before the season premiere they had like a fear airlines promo for some odd reason yeah, that was weird. But I guess it, there is an airplane in the first episode, which we will <laughs> talk about. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Loosely. Yeah. But it was funny as hell, though. Okay. Yeah. Is is there even a government? Yeah. You know, FAA, federal right regulations require you to not smoke. <laughs> I love that line. Um, but like, and then now, uh, afterwards they have like the, the, first of all, like, so you, we've only had two episodes, right? And, uh, right. So, uh, two episodes. And then like, you've had the, um, like the multiple kill videos. So to like, and Alicia's won both obviously. Right. Um, but like, it's all like a video game kind of pixel-esque multiple kills, team assist kills, like, you know, and things like that. And, it, and I just love just the way they're kind of revolving in the marketing and stuff like that. They had the, uh, the walkies award where they give alicia like a it was like a pop figure i think right it looked like a golden pop figure or something uh, and it was like the best improvised kill and it was like alicia mm-hmm. debnam carry and she was like you know i won this award you know obviously because it was a propeller <laughs> i just so like what did you guys what was your impression because like it, i feel like they put a lot more juice into this uh this season of fear the walking dead you know but they've progressively been giving it more and stopped treating it like an experiment you know what was your impression of, of these the marketing tactic mm. like, i didn't see that i didn't see that last thing you were talking about with the with the the awards and such but the other like them jumping on the trampolines and like the you know really pushing pushing for the new season um well i mean they're probably just trying to like, get people to hang on <laughs> <laughs> yeah for dear life like no, don't leave <laughs> maybe since it wasn't backed up to the walking dead like cause, oh, okay because last year they did the whole theater thing mm. where it was they did the finale of the walking dead and then they all jumped right. right into the and i yeah. you know they might have did that more for morgan's um crossover but maybe since it wasn't so close together they that could be bit more yeah like don't don't, don't forget yeah. about us <laughs> yeah right. there was a little bit of an overlap though i think between um because they, they were they've been marketing this thing i think since uh i think midway into the, the the last bit of the season too so they've been marketing this for like at least a month and a half i think before the season ended or okay. like the, the last four episodes i believe of the walking dead right correct me if i'm wrong but like you know all these all these things afterwards though too it's like all these promo things after um after it started airing though too i just i just find that they keep wanting to push that production Production or that that marketing angle to kind of keep people watching and stuff like that. Oh yeah, look, we're cool. <laughs> it's not something we didn't say in the, in the last episode. Like, there's a lot riding on this season um, right. of Fear the Walking Dead between the spinoff, the movies, and TWD. Fear the Walking Dead is gonna have bits and origins of the ne- of what's to come in all mm-hmm. these series. So they're gonna have a hand in that. So it seems like that's what it's gonna shape up to be. Like if if, if um, what is obviously turning out to be the Commonwealth is 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 emerging from the season of Fear the Walking Dead and. And a lot of people playing those cri- clips of uh, Rick on the radio, or the the radio. Uh, Jadis is walkie yeah, J- and yeah, what's Jadis. going on, mm-hmm. uh, and as well as I mean, and I, I was going to save this for the end of the, this podcast, but like uh, the the radio scene at the end of T- 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 TWD season nine, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're postulating it could it have been somebody from Fear the Walking Dead? You know what I mean? Could that voice yeah. have been somebody on Fear? Mm-hmm. You know, it and and, and I think one of the first things I wanted to talk about is that where we are in the timeline because. Um, and why don't we go around the room? Like, Carol, what do you, what do you, where do you think we are currently in the timeline in terms of the beginning of Fear of the Walking Dead? That's tricky because, I mean, they play with time so much that it's a little difficult for me to really kind of like nail down. I do think it's possible that that season finale for season nine of the walking dead yeah maybe maybe the the person on the other end of the of the of the walkie talkie could be somebody in relation to fear i mean who that would be i don't know maybe somebody that we haven't met yet i'm not sure i think that for me the part that i'm more intrigued about i mean is is more so like this was in like the first episode of the season for fear was that the crm group with the interlocking circles and all of that because we've seen that on the helicopter on the walking dead and we've seen it also um oh on the can on the, on the can that jadis that, ate yeah. the food from in the junkyard yeah. so you're like what symbol is that like at the time i was like no the right. three circles come on and read something <laughs> so it's all like so it's all kind of like coming together and i'm trying to see like i'm excited to see right it's kind of coming together um so that's something for me like that's what keeps me watching 
in fear right now. Like I'm glad yeah. that they started. Off. No, right. I'm glad that they that started right. off this yeah. season with that. You know, because it's sort of like okay, I want to know more. I want right. to know what where this right. is heading and how relevant and like, it is. How so. relevant is it? And also like with Dwight too. It's like I want to see. Are we going to get some backdrop as to what happened at the right. sanctuary after the war? Like because we don't really get much into that on The Walking Dead. So I'm Do you hoping. Really- do you really think we'll get a background though? Because I don't know. On Dwight? Because Dwight was sent away. I mean, it's not like he goes back to the sanctuary. I mean, he was sent away. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't and know. I, th- I think that's why I asked the first question I wanted to ask because we will see Dwight in the next episode, just so right. everybody knows. Um, which I re- called, by the way. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah yeah I, which is weird because I, I i they showed daniel salazar in the second episode which we are right. covering here on this episode too and um and the very next episode is dwight what are you going to show the next episode sherry yeah <laughs> and exactly. that's what I, and that's and i will get to that at the end of the episode uh, this okay. episode because yeah. there are some things that have been <laughs> churning in my brain but why i wanted to talk about the timeline was um i mean my my theory is that we have to be somewhere in between the time jump and I would say more earlier on Mm -hmm. than one would normally say I would say probably a few months after Rick Grimes goes away in the helicopter that's my thought right you know a lot of people are trying to line up what happens on the walkie with what happens on fear the walking dead Mm -hmm. I think that's too much of a stretch to me to be honest Mm -hmm. are you talking about when she's in the junkyard with Gabriel is that what you're talking less what you're talking about is it that or it could be um no or, yeah or, it, it, yeah right okay. before uh, rick gets picked up and there's right. that okay. noise on the walkie mm. so mm. i think it's it would be cool it would be really cool and i'd be happy to be wrong but i would i would probably venture a guess that and the reason i'll give you the clear reason was something that we pointed out at the beginning of se- uh, season nine of the walking dead was a lot of the weather events that happened um, affected yeah, the, w- the bridges and, and all the stuff that was going right. on at the beginning of the season. So it, there, between the storm and what happened in Martha, and Bl- I, they must be a few months after you know Rick, Rick gets picked up by the helicopter. It has to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- otherwise they're kind of playing too much. They're they're playing the wrong game of time in my mind. And mm-hmm. you know, I mentioned it, and I think it's a pr- and look. It's a solid the theories you're going to get. <laughs> um, just because of those weather, weather events, the hurricanes that happened to Fear the Walking Dead affecting the bridges and the walking dead and, right. it, and you know it being a global thing um you know nationwide thing um and so the reason why i think that's important is because it determines how plausible it is how long dwight's been looking for sherry right you know what mm-hmm. i mean right. could okay. he been looking for four years no could he been looking for only a short period of time i think it's a little too soon but like mm. this seems like just the right amount of like mm-hmm. he's been on this mission maybe he's about to give right. up hope oh Joe, it's obviously she's come back to that house you know i mean because she wrote him another note right right by the time yeah. he came back so and she she could have only she she only waited for so long, I suppose. Right. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. And, and what, how long were the events between the time she uh, she wrote the original letter and and probably the time not long. I mean, like two months. That, that whole war Max. with Negan was such a short period of time. Like, like right. Week, you know, because he went he went to the <laughs> at house. at least two weeks. <laughs> right. <laughs> he went to the house, saw the note. And then, you know, he had the beer, the pretzels, whatever, and then he left. And then there was another note when he came back. So it, it I couldn't say, have been. I say we all have beer and pretzels for the next podcast. All right. <laughs> Pretty I'm good. fine with that. <laughs> Um, but yeah um oh look we got uh des on the stream too des is uh the standard for coleman domingo by the way i'm blowing your spot des so des is a cool dude he he showed he showed us pictures of all the stand-ins uh hanging out um in in his own after party and his bar is wicked like just mad it's just out of this world with colors and backlighting and all that stuff it so blew like your mind. Of, yeah, it kind of blew my mind. Um, <laughs> we got notorious, notorious Negan on here too. He's from England. Um, nice. Badass, funny ass uh, Instagram dude. Um, and we also have Chris on the live stream. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Chris from BMNY. <laughs> <laughs> he's causing he's gonna he's about to cause some chaos soon um <laughs> blowing shit up uh. <laughs> but um yeah yeah okay so um carol i have a very special yes. question for you oh boy okay <laughs> the, op- <laughs> the opening theme i need your i need to kind of re oh, reintroduce the, the question of the opening <laughs> theme now that it's consistent sort of <sighs> I understand what they're getting at. I understand like the idea of like every 
the theme every week. You're going to see little snippets that give you an idea of what's to come in the episode. Um, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I mean, for the second episode, I saw like when I was looking at the theme, like the, the little uh, boxes in the tree and like the little and the walkers underneath it kind of like, you know, trying to get at it, which obviously we saw in like the episode, which is fine. But it's just I still I guess for me, you know how I feel. I love a, a theme song and I feel like shows that have like distinctive themes. So to me, it's like... Yeah, that seems pretty distinctive now. (laughs) I guess it is. It's distinctive in a non-distinctive way. Well, the reason why I asked... Unassuming. Yeah. Well, the reason why I asked the question was because when we broached the topic last season, she... I mean, you'd seem to have thought that that maybe this theme was kind of like a passing glance because they kept changing it. Because they kept changing it, yeah. The the first two seasons, I think they kept it the same. The third season, they sort of changed it because it wasn't as loud and blah, blah, blah. Right, right. And then obviously the fourth season with the kind of turn over of characters and stuff like that uh-huh. and re kind of kajiggering the cast and the theme and the mm-hmm. setting mm-hmm. Um, they changed it to kind of like a southwestern theme right but now that we're still in the southwest texas is still very yeah. much a part of the show um, it's just a it's a different it's a different approach because it doesn't it's not um it's not a theme that's very kind of strikes fear or, or anxiety or anything it's it's actually very kind of like hmm I don't know, just kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's just not, like, when I hear the Walking Dead theme music, it's like. It's emblematic. It's like. Chilling. Yeah, it's chilling. I'm like. But it's distinctively (laughs) the Walking Dead is kind of what you're getting at. But I guess, like, it just fits with the theme, like, this sort of anxiety. Oh, my God, this is a horror show. And it just kind of works. Or even, like, Game of Thrones. There's a majestic nature to the theme of Game of Thrones. (laughs) That's like, okay, this is is the throw. Like, it just kind of works with it. So with fear, it's just it's very um yeah it's just very unassuming and it's also very short very yeah. only like short. a few seconds so. yeah exactly. yeah whereas the, the the walking dead theme is like a solid minute i've timed it yeah <laughs> but yeah but yeah i mean i i think there's something too like keeping it well the fear god the original fear uh intro was like seconds was very yeah it was <laughs> literally <very> seconds <laughs> like here you have a solid 10 seconds maybe 11 seconds <laughs> but like <laughs> like let me let me tell you what fears uh, intro was for the first two seasons <laughs> that's it <laughs> i can see why they'd want to change that yeah as like fear the walking right. dead it was like i mean you know you can only last for so long but yeah. I, I think there's something so like i i, I kind of actually would have agreed with you more last season but mm-hmm. now they're kind of now that we're still in texas um in this season and now we're actually starting to see that um that the that texas is almost kind of like a character of the show in a right. way mm-hmm. we're starting to see a lot more of the landscape like yeah. the 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 terrain kind of plays the terrain the weather Mm-hmm. kind of plays a part in the show now mm-hmm. like we're starting to kind of like they're not taking that for granted and th- to the point where actually some of the crew shirts have the state of texas in the is like fear texas the walking right. dead you mm-hmm. know like the actual state logo the mm-hmm. picture of the state so yeah. like you start to get the feeling that okay they're really investing in being here mm-hmm. and 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 I, and who knows if, if there's another season or whatnot but which is kind of interesting because I, I, re- I remember like it was so funny we got midway through the season maybe not even in they announced the next season you know like season five right like, wow i was just blown away like they're so mm-hmm. invested in this mm-hmm. and so i'm kind of i'm kind of interested to see if texas still becomes a part of this show and I, and as much as people like want um <laughs> the two worlds to touch to finally it's like the two the, the two the male and female character leads you know finally <laughs> kissing instead of going no no <laughs> please <laughs> it cannot be like i i, I kind of like the idea i like that it's different i like that we're not yeah. sweating wedding in Georgia watching flies hit our or hit, hit our favorite characters you know Rick Grimes sweating and looking staring at you with like dead eyes you know that's <laughs> Georgia in a nutshell that's like what we experienced in Sonoy recently it was, oh, it was just God. it was madness like the humidity was just out of control um and so I understand now mm-hmm. I understand fully um yeah and Chris just made a bold statement on oh the Instagram yeah. chat oh uh, and I wanted to say hi to Stacy Odom on YouTube but Chris just said FTW D greater than sign TWD. Bold statement. No. Right? I don't know if I would agree with that. I don't re- even think he agrees with that. Uh, <laughs> I'm so I think happy. he's trying to start some shit. He said, <laughs> t- he said tide's turning. I feel like the only reason why people are hanging on is for Rick, uh, for when Rick comes back in the movies and Michonne's departure. Honestly, what else are you watching for? <laughs> 
know. <laughs> I I will listen. I am very happy with the fact that like with Angela King, <laughs> the story has gotten significant. Like I was very happy with last season. I was very I happy was with last season, and I really was not sure how I was going to feel after Rick's departure. I was like, right. how is this going to go? I'm not sure, but I still tuned in, and I still thought they were good quality right. episodes. That I still felt like, and I wasn't really sure, like, you know, how is it going to work? How is, how is the show going to be carried? Is Daryl going to be able to carry the show? Whatever. Right. He actually speaks now. He has lines. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like a, a good number of characters are kind of keeping the show afloat. And, yeah, yeah, right. and Jared just said hello, by the way. Hi, Jared, your husband. <laughs> Bye, uh, husband. Hi, Jared. Yeah, you're Jared. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Jared. You just went to the cow. <laughs> That's funny. You didn't get the milk for free. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's my thing. I, I, I'm happy with The Walking Dead. I mean, yeah. I think I, I'm not totally sold with fear. I mean, like I just, and I don't know if it's just because I'm not as invested in the characters as I right. am with Walking Dead, and maybe it's also because I have. I know of like what happens in the comics. So it's like, I'm watching the walking dead and I'm sort of like, okay, let's see, you know, how this is going to go. I don't know. It may not be exactly how that goes, but maybe it'll go a different way. But with fear, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I still look at it as just not quite on the same level. I just don't, I mean, it's okay, but I'm not looking forward to, I'm not looking forward to every Sunday, like, okay, I'm going to watch fear. It's like, okay, it's fear. That's cool. You know, but when walking dead is coming on in October, I'm like, Oh god! <laughs> like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid of it coming back. Like there's there Why? are parts there are parts that I'm kind of very uneasy about when it comes back. Like I know for sure that Maggie's going to be like the character Maggie's coming back. I uh, and that show be... was canceled, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think she would have mm-hmm. come back regardless. She would have. They yeah. would have shot around. Sure. Whiskey Cavalier mm-hmm. would have shot around her her <laughs> Walking Dead schedule. That wasn't yeah. something I was worried about. What I am worried about is. You know, Maggie coming back to all these people dead. All right. these people she cared about. Uh, mm-hmm. She's going to be Which with something Ed. she's not unfamiliar with. No, exactly. But it's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot. So, and like, yeah, we don't have to get into it. <laughs> right. But then there's, then there's, she's going <laughs> to, this is my theory. She's okay. going to be with Eduardo for sure. Right. And fans are not going to like that. Why? Because she, they want her to be with Glenn. Why? Irrational. Just very right. irrational. Yeah. They don't want her to be with anybody else. They want her to live in celibacy. <laughs> um, it, would make, it would make total sense though. So in the comics, she ends up getting with uh, yeah, Dante. Exactly. So she does find yeah. other calm, love calm in the down. comics. So. It would make total sense. I was yeah. an Alden booster. La, 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 la. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it no, could happen. maybe. But um, but I was a big Alden booster. Now, I mean, now that uh, the field I know, has been cleared, I, agree. I mean, maybe it could happen. I don't know. I don't know. But but I would. But like if a little Alden, bit of Alden? I was always an Alden booster with Matt. I was, I was too. Yeah. I agree. I don't Isn't know. there an age yeah. difference there? I see Eduardo <laughs> with with Maggie more than I would see Alden with Maggie. Yeah, I thought. Interesting. Yeah. Well, what I. They, aren't the age differences the same though? <laughs> like, I mean, right. between, between Alden Megan and, and, and uh, I see. I thought Eduardo there was Maggie. more of an age difference between Eden and Alden than there is with Alden and Maggie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I, that's, that's what true. I was thinking. That's true. Yeah, huh. well, especially now. How old do we think Alden is? <laughs> He's almost forty, yeah, I would say. <laughs> what? what? I didn't think, I did mid thirties. I was thinking like twenty twenty. <laughs> I was thinking twenties. That facial hair is 20s. very. <laughs> no, concealing. I thought twenties. I thought twenties for sure. Yeah, twenties. Well, then how old? How old was um um? Maggie is Ma- supposed to be only like twenty five in the show. Like, when right. it started, though, or when, when she it started, left? she was like twenty one, right? Or maybe a little younger than that. In her twenties, I think twenty two. Actually, I think she says twenty two. Twenty two. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So she's she's playing somebody who was <laughs> younger than her current <laughs> age, like ten years younger than her current age, right. <laughs> which happens all the time. I think she's oh, actually yeah. our age, Carol. Uh, like it's like. For a little, maybe 40, a little probably. younger than forty. Probably, <laughs> it's very interesting yeah. to me. Um, wow. All yeah. right, we're getting into it a little bit too much. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I think I've proven my case. But then there's also like what's going on with Carol and the Ezekiel thing, and then Daryl. It's just a mess. And I feel like they keep playing around with this Daryl and like Carol thing, and I just feel like it's like the carrot that they dangle. They just you know love what? dangling that thing. But the thing is, it's like I don't care. Like I just want like Carol to be the one to take out Alpha. I'm going on the record right now and saying that Carol's going to be the one 
want to take out Alpha, and Negan is going to save Daryl from Beta, and that's how I feel like this whole thing is going to like go down eventually. When it's this the only all- way it can go down. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. But I think I you really- see what I mean. Like, there's we're going into something that is just we have no idea. We just yeah. literally have no between Fear the Walking Dead, between the movies, the spinoff. Where where's where's TWD and all this? You know, like <laughs> there's a lot hanging in the air that is really uncomfortable really uncomfortable i'm not saying i'm not looking forward to it i'm just not excited (laughs) to get into it i'll just say that i am i I I am I would All let it unfold. Answers, I need them. <laughs> All of this. Why are you not excited? No, Thanks. I'm not. I'm not excited for the awkwardness. But I. Well, I, for I the awkwardness. No, I'm not. I just. I let it unfold. Like, and that. Ah. No, it's a good. It's a good thing to. Okay. It's a good place to be. Okay. Because okay, I'm not. You know, I could chill out a little bit. I, I could look at fear and be like, oh, this is kind of fun and exciting and action packed. I mean, going back to the season premiere, plane crash. A, a lot. Almost no. It, it was entirely practical effects. Those explosions were real. The heat was real the the walkers were real the props were almost real <laughs> you know what i mean the weight the styrofoam propeller that she was using was weighted so <laughs> there was some weight behind each of those th- so she could have hurt somebody really bad <laughs> including herself um uh, alicia is what i'm talking about yeah um and and chris is currently fighting with somebody in the chat and it's just calm down buddy <laughs> just Uh-oh. just chill out oh, just no. be, be nice um and uh just in, just in case you're wondering um clout henry um chris is just fucking with you just just so you know he's <laughs> just messing with you right now if you could see what i'm talking about it's kind of funny um but yeah, yeah I, I going back to fear the walking dead i think there's a lot more potential for excitement yeah and i think that's that's kind of becoming the defining feature of because fear the walking dead has always been different from the walking dead and maybe that's people don't like that but i think there's what, what's great about fear is it gets to do all the things that the walking dead has stopped doing like okay there's been so much funny there have been so many funny lines in the first two episodes of fear the walking dead than i think i've seen in two seasons of the walking dead you know seven and eight not great season nine we've had some good ones but like um it has many one-liners i'm just saying but yeah but only negan (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? He's been he has been carrying the weight since Abraham. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So it's kind of like I mean Eugene every now and again, but like even then it's kind of like under right. auspicious circumstances. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you know, okay, shut up. Jerry's <laughs> funny. True. Jerry is funny. Jerry is You're pretty right. funny. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, few and far between though. Like it, it, when you see it, it's great. But uh, three or four episodes later. But what is what is the humor that you find in fear? Out of curiosity. Um, like what? Okay. Uh, it was the cat the line with the skid mark in the second episode right you know oh this your cat has taste my cat licks <laughs> licks its own asshole <laughs> like, yeah. that's hysterical <laughs> <laughs> um, like just things like that. I mean, I, you know, I I thought I actually create like had a note with just all the humorous lines, but whatever. I, I'm sure I'll get to it. But like <laughs> even like interactions with Matt Frewer, like just just that kind of awkward interaction with Logan. Like, I, well, so let's let's let's. I kind of want to get the whole thing with Logan out of the way because there's so much more to unpack. Uh, by the end of the season, like even the plane, like the idea and the setting and geography of like the p- plane crash and how they start off the show is kind of a whole other thing. I want to get into but oh yeah actually I, I even just wanted to mention something about morgan recapping the first episode like the way that morgan or that lenny james recaps the the beginning right before the plane crash that whole last season going into this season there is a sense of like it, like legitimacy that like him doing it and the production value in them recapping um the last season kind of lets you see the world of fear through morgan's eyes and morgan becomes kind of like us but then he's kind of like the bridge between between us and Fear the Walking Dead, it's like, hey guys, you know, I wasn't sure about this group, but then they showed me this and that, and then I went on this journey, and it's not about us, you know, and and you know, I learned to to not, you know, lose people, lose myself, and I walk through the door, and blah blah blah, and that it's weird how that it, it legitimizes Fear the Walking Dead as a real, like as a part of the universe. It says, hey guys, listen up, <laughs> this this show is important, you know, it's important to the growth of this Morgan character, if anything. But then also the recap also kind of 
sets the stage for how to look at this season to come. Like, you know, we're on our path, we've opened the door, we're helping people, and then now this is what happens, you know, the plane crash happens. So I just thought that, like, fear needs more legitimacy between Morgan's recap, between the marketing materials and all that stuff. Like, you know, it's it's really, really important. Like, and I think that they're putting a lot of weight behind the series. You know, and they're, they're putting their cards on the table, too. Like, I saw the, the intro to this episode, too, was even kind of cool. Like, they, instead of doing, like, a previously on The Walking Dead, like, they just did, like, a, a line with previously coming out and kind of let the, the, the panels kind of speak, you know, for themselves. I thought that was pretty cool, you know? The visuals on the show speak for themselves. They're all really good shots, practical effects. Yeah. Uh, really cool cool props makeup vfx i mean it it stands on its own you know it's all action-packed you know anywho <laughs> um okay so let's talk about uh, matt frewer logan um first impressions what did you think rachel love him to death i love him absolutely love logan um, my favorite was the little uh, nod to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids when he threw the baseball cap on. I just pretty much lost it right there. <laughs> Tell me you caught that. <laughs> yeah. When he yeah. walks in and he puts the baseball cap on and he pulls it down. <laughs> yeah. Straight, yeah. Out of the, straight out of the movie. Yeah, oh, my God. Loved it. Yeah. And, I, and I just, I like his general outlook, too. Like, you know, this is, this is mine. Pretty chill. I don't want to fight you for it. <sighs> just, I'm tired. Just go away. <laughs> I feel like that's how I would be at that point. Like, yeah, that's kind of something I want to talk about too. <laughs> well, I like actually, it. I'm curious about what you what you other gals think too. Like, Carol, what did you? What was your impression? I, like, we had been really pumping out the idea that he was going to be on the show, but what did you think, Carol? Mm, it was fine, but I mean, I'm I'm not necessarily sure what direction they're going with his character. Is he supposed to be the new like the the new nemesis? Is he not a nemesis? I don't know if he's in, at all connected with the whatever group assuming it was the Commonwealth that got Alfia, or is that a separate group? And he's like just his own man who's just kind of like protective over his things and just trying to reclaim his things. Um, yeah. yeah. Are, are, is he the saviors or is he the vultures, right? Like you're trying to place him on the spectrum of how to treat him. Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure. Like, is he a pertinent character? Um, is he not a pertinent character? Is he going to be like a significant character? Is he just like an everyman sort of like, like, hey, you took my stuff, I want it back. Or is this going to be like, because I feel like there's different kinds of villains, you know, like you have your villains that are like these sort of larger than life entities or, or, or anti heroes or whatever. And then you have just sort of like, I'm just a mean person. And you know, this is it like, like, what I am hopeful is that he is not another Martha kind of situation. <laughs> right. I, mm, well, I think we can already <laughs> tell that he's definitely not that like, I just don't want it not to be an anticlimactic sort of like, well, what is right. his purpose? Like, well, I'm not sure yet what where his character fits into everything yet so. well, in, in terms of that though like uh, i don't i don't doubt that he's not a martha but i, I there is a part of me that's thinking that like he's gonna come in as something and then i don't think he's gonna be as big a deal as what's gonna come because there's it's right. looking that over the last the course of the last two episodes it looks like there's an even bigger bad that they're facing right now in whatever region that they're in uh that they're landlocked in by the way is kind of something i want right. to bring up well actually what was your impression of uh matt for of logan you know, it was interesting to see how he didn't want a fight, you know, that he sent them away to kind of take them in. I couldn't tell if it was more he's just tired or if he's being sneaky, you know. Right, right. And that's um, that's the key. That's a big thing, too. I'm glad right. you picked up on that, too. Right. Because you're just saying, um, sick of fighting. Yeah, you know, you don't know what it is. So it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if our characters make it back to the joint to see how he'll handle that situation. Right, right. And it's kind of something I wanted to bring up. And that was that, you know, over the course of the last two seasons, well, last season and this season, mm -hmm. we've seen several, several bads, maybe mm -hmm. not big bads, but, right. you know, of the big bads. Okay. And that's actually kind of interesting. The, the big bad that we had last season was Martha, right? Yes. But Martha was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And as Carol would say, stupid, but crazy. <laughs> what I found more interesting are the bads that weren't quite bad. And well, that, that's what makes a compelling character. Right. Compelling right. characters Cultures. are characters that are like nuanced that, you know, that they are not True. necessarily heroes. They're not necessarily villains. They make a compelling case for what they're doing. And that's what makes them interesting because whenever you have any character that's just one dimensional and it's it it doesn't it doesn't make for a strong personality and it's hard to 
to really kind of become, um, I don't know, just like attracted to this character and want to see more because it, you feel like you're seeing everything already. If it's just sort of like with Martha, there was no real development and it was so one dimensional that it made it hard to really kind of buy into it. Like it just seemed like evil for the sake of being evil. But right, right. It so wasn't- the, problem, the problem isn't really, I, so I, I think you can have like a crazy character that has, that you can, that's compelling though. Martha right. wasn't that because right. I mean, we had the governor. But right, exactly. I, like you can have crazy, but crazy for why? Explain to me why crazy. And if it's compelling enough, then it's like, all right, fine, I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, but this this one was irrationally crazy. But that's yeah. not even my point. I found what I found more compelling was that is were the, were the regular bads, like where you weren't really actually even sure. And I'm not talking like we really aren't sure Negan is bad. No, Negan was bad. Right. Um, you know, the governor was bad. We were in the Walking Dead universe. Your bads were bad. You knew they were bad. Yeah, you could make it. You could do backflips and understand their backstory to be like, oh, maybe in another light they're not bad. No, <laughs> but in the in the fear of the Walking Dead universe, at least the last two seasons, and maybe even other seasons, by the way, um, you could make the excuse that they definitely like. Okay, these guys aren't bad. Like, th- there was a there's a huge following still that is sad that Troy Otto isn't isn't on the show anymore even though he was clearly crazy crazy but like the fact that he was able to be manipulated the way he was by madison and things like that made him seem completely like oh wait uh madison can tame this crazy how weird and and a bad like a big bad or a bad right um troy otto also like obviously awful but like in some in a a different like in like another shade like you could see him as a complicated character very complicated and not like negan negan obviously was bad like Mm -hmm. You yeah you could do backflips to say otherwise. Now what I want to talk about with this one is that like Matt Frewer, the Logan character, he's like he the there's a common thread that's going through the vultures through Logan and through even like the Leland and the Pilferers kind of tiny arc in the la- in the first two episodes or something. The, the the theme is these people act as though they're exhausted, and I think it's the right. Texas region that's exhausting them. And we commented it on the, uh, from the beginning of last season is that whatever region that they're in, resource are very low thanks to the vultures thank you but also like maybe just the fact of where the where they're at um it seems just like being where they are at the time it, it just it's just pounding them it's exhausting there's nobody for miles etc cetera, etc cetera. and so i love that this is a recurring theme your bads are all just tired of fighting your bads are all just kind of exhausted it's like ah if i can get it off you fine if not i'll just starve you out if not i'll just move on you know right. i'll wait till you die and then we'll take over same thing with logan Logan's kind of like, well, we didn't want to fight with you, so we re- we misdirected you. You know, you're obviously a bunch of poor saps that don't understand this region or not willing to give in to this region of of Texas overall. And so we're just gonna have you go here while we go in there, and then they, I got my property again. And again, that's like another theme, like you said, it's it's their property. It's like, well, I mean, technically it's ours. You know, I'm just getting back what's mine. So it adds like another layer to kind of like, well, I'm just getting back. And so it makes you start to think like, who, like, and I'll ask this question: Do you think logan is kind of like a bad guy necessarily he can he has potential to be a bad I don't guy think he is right there. now yeah N- not yet but not mm. yet he could be right i guess we can't I account mean, for what could be though because you never know right you never know right. i mean any anybody could be a bad guy let's be honest I yeah mean, and, and your bad guys can turn into good guys kind of like Jesus. right sure yeah. As of right now, I don't think he's a bad guy. He didn't outright come in and kill everybody to take what was his. He right. was like, oh, look over there. And I think then, he's yeah, willing to defend. Yeah, I think he's willing to defend his ter- the, his his territory, technically. Oh, yeah. But where has he been? Yeah. Exactly. Well, and we Good allude question. to that in season four. It seems as though there was a schism in, in the trucker community between... And I and I think that's kind of what ended Clayton. I think there was something going on, mm-hmm. and I don't think it was just Martha. I don't think Martha's the one that ended Clayton. By the way, I okay. think Martha wanted to be the one to end Clayton, right? But I think something happened, maybe with Logan, or something happened, like a difference of opinion between the truckers, or maybe the schism occurred because of Martha. You know, maybe because right. people were going after, you know, because Martha was going after all the truckers. Maybe Logan said, like, dude, we have to take care of our own because we're dying off left and right. And maybe they decided to split from Clayton. Maybe there were no... I mean, it's obvious there were no more truckers left. So they all went with uh, Logan, it looks like. I mean, something's, something happened. Otherwise, it'd be more truckers on the road. Right, yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. who knows? I, I think bringing back purpose to Martha's craziness 
this might actually right. flesh her out a little bit more. Like right. it, it gives gives us more of an excuse to kind of feature her, you know, as <laughs> as is something we we don't mysteriously <laughs> ignore, you know. Boo, Martha didn't exist. <laughs> I want to pretend that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, but if if we give her just a, like a raison d'être, as they say, like a reason for being, then okay, it's not so bad because it, it it's like basically Logan's origin story. You know, like it's this is why he came about. It's like, well, bitch is killing all our people. I'm gonna take all our people <laughs> and go away. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I'm not convinced. I, I'm starting to think that the big bad is obviously not Logan, and and it, it is these people who are hanging heads from trees and entrails right. across telephone right. poles and and stuff like that. And by the way, in the second episode, when Denai gets out of uh, whatever the truck stop and she sees the antenna had fallen, obviously the wind didn't blow it down. Right. I, I don't think. What do you guys? Think? think i don't think so i was confused when she said that i was like the wind i'm like it's not (laughs) it's not even blowing (laughs) yeah and where were all the walkers like you know they i don't know it always seems so suspicious to me Mm -hmm. yeah i I don't i don't think walkers did that yeah i don't think the wind i mean yeah 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 and they did some handiwork too like the fact that they were able to get all the way up to the billboard sign what the heck does that mean by the way that they could do that yeah what's the shoes over the like the phone lines like does that mean something like it usually means that somebody like like as like a memorial to somebody so So very common theme in brooklyn by the way i was gonna say yeah (laughs) i thought it was because of bullies yeah that too it could be (laughs) but in new york it's a memorial yeah okay and i thought it always meant that they killed the person and they put their shoes over the end no it's it's either a good thing or like a playful thing okay I mean, really, I, I knew I knew kids who really, literally, when their shoes wore and it wore out, they would just do that. Oh, really? They yeah. just, just <laughs> on no, their on no their block. All there. Yeah, just okay. on their block. All the reasons. There's all the reasons. There's a plethora of reasons why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're no. They're no good for me anymore. Rach, how's your tattoo? Oh, good. It's all healed up. Oh yeah, everybody show show everybody your tattoo. There there is a picture, a good close up picture of it on Instagram. But yeah, yes. you got that at um, yeah. I saw Walker. her getting it by the way. Oh, yeah. in person, yeah. Walker Stark yeah. Atlanta, uh, Chicago, right? Chicago, Chicago. Was it is Fan Fest Chicago actually? Right, technically. Uh, yeah, it was like I don't know half and half. It's but fan. I think it's eventually switching over. I I mean, are they going to call Atlanta Walker Stalker or are they calling it Fan Fest? That's another good question, by the way. I know we're kind of taking a break, but what do you guys think? I, I don't. I think heard it's... they were merging all of it over to Fan Fest eventually. That's like, what I thought too. It'll be a process, but I think eventually there will be no more Walker Stalker, only Fan Fest. Well, they they were doing that from even i don't think they announced that but i all the fan fest people were doing the video for walker stalker so it, when i checked um with the mm. media team like oh okay this is like a fan fest event i mean eventually it's going to be fan fest chicago or fan fest atlanta probably yeah probably okay so last thing i think in terms of like the group back in uh the denim factory the mill as they call it right what did you guys think of sarah kind of speaking to jim like the fact that he's like gone but not forgotten <laughs> Like, he's still kind of a character on the show. For, for, yeah, about the beer. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's, like, addressing him, like, telling him it was, like, a shit pie a la mode. Do you think she feels guilty about how she treated him? Oh, for sure. I was going to say, they yeah. didn't really like each other when he was alive, right. did they? I think they left no. on really good terms, though. They left the on good it. terms. I mean, he told her the beer recipe. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. mutual respect, I think. Right. <laughs> but I think the fact that she's still kind of addressing him, you know, obviously, they're all drinking beer, too. Well, like, you even see strand drinking a beer They're right before he meets what meets right up before, with daniel yeah right before he meets up with daniel <laughs> which is awesome by right. the way mm-hmm. but i i think i mean i just like the idea that he's just become this like just this weird larger than life aaron was it right. what, was name aaron um stanford right okay yeah like he's he's just like he's still kind of a part of the show still mm-hmm. like he's still she kind of so, a, such a small character and then <laughs> I know. He, he's like the her he's was he slowly becoming like the herschel of the walking dead right <laughs> oh fear the walking dead <laughs> Yeah. Like, like, oh, whenever we think of like, we, what's what's our moral compass? Then look at the poster of Jimbo and Augie's ale. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's annoying Jimbo look right at there. The beer. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he gave us his beer recipe. 
Right. I I like the fact that though um, when they get the truck when they get to the truck stop, um, like John uh, John actually finds one of the movies that was on his list that you see in the beginning of right when Logan comes in. You see the the movie list, and on the top it says something like mm. uh, "Please return when done and sign out" or something like that. J and J. Like I I'm gonna basically write a book blog piss uh, blog piss <laughs> blog post on um, <laughs> like the visuals that I saw in the episode and just whatever if somebody can decipher them too uh, like in terms of geo coordinates and stuff but like one of those things is the movie list and um, he finds one of the movies in the truck stop and it happens to be on the list too to, to bring back but I just find it kind of interesting that again like we talked about this in season 9 when um, Carol's solution for the high women is to like watch movies on the movie night thing it kind right. of just mm-hmm. brings everybody together right. I just like it, it but you do realize that Fear of the Walking Dead did it first right. you know with uh, John and June and Laura right mm-hmm. you know and so now they're bringing them back again so like mm-hmm. I I kind of just like the idea that this is kind of like a recurring theme now between two seasons. <laughs> what, what do you think of Luciana's acting in the last two episodes, by the way? Because I think she's kind of pulling out all the stops. I was going to say the <laughs> um, the drama is on another level. Right. And oh it's, it's a little laying it on a little thick for me personally. Um how do you feel? What what is what does it make you feel? I'm gonna tell Denai herself what what this what you say right now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, it's no nothing personal. It's just very um, it's just very heavy. It's very very heavy, and just I, I don't know what to make of it. Like I mean, because I don't feel like it has to be. It just seems like a whole lot of nothing. I mean, like just a whole lot of like drama, but um, I, I don't necessarily understand for what. Like I could watch like John Dory and like June interactions all day long. <laughs> and, like no, because there's something like so understated, but like compelling about like their dialogues, you know. And right. it's just, it's, it's just I like that. I, I like that kind of playing off of each other, and I can appreciate it, and and I like to see it. It's like if it's an episode where. I know I'm going to see John Dory and I'm going to see June. I'm in, you know, I want to see, you know, I, I enjoy it. But with Luciana, I feel like I don't know if it's just trying to kind of be relevant, but it just feels very heavy handed to me. Right. And I'm just not convinced as to why. Like I, I watch the scenes and I'm like, OK. Like your mm. character's a little too out there. Like yeah. there's like a, there's no equalization, it sounds like. Right. And I almost right. kind of like forgot where she came from for a minute. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Watching her, I'm like, how did we get to know her? <laughs> right it's 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 one of those things where she it's was a soldier like, ori- originally right. she was yep she was a soldier originally yep yeah like okay. and i remember that but it was like at first it's like why where when right how? yeah I, th- I think that's been like a kind of like a I don't know, like an oversight when it came to the writing over the last right. two seasons. Yeah, is that they they made don't her a little what's... bit too vulnerable over the last right. two seasons to the point where like you don't right. remember how she was before they brought her back onto the show, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that was to the jet. I mean, for the hardcore fans, we remember, right? You know what I mean? Like we remember. Well, who's we? Actually, who's been watching since the beginning? <laughs> it's a question. I mean, I've been watching, did, him, right? but, mm-hmm. but I I truly for a second I forgot. I just yeah. it slipped my mind. Like I'm like wait because i know she disappeared for a little bit and then she came back and yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I i've like... only ever i've only ever watched the episodes once through so first oh, time yeah, me too, there. Me too. Yeah. Mm. i have to go back and rewatch it to catch all the details of everything yeah i definitely want to yeah. do that again once uh at one point but i and i think you're right like if you if you had been watching the last two seasons and just don't remember what happened the first three it's kind right. of like I, what what was she like again how did we get here she wanted to run away with nick because she just didn't want to be around her mom and stuff like that and like the uh, Troy Otto is racist. Um, like I, we yes, can do this on our own. Right. Because then they went to the gates and she was sick or dehydrated or something. Right. right and he right. wanted to kill her. Exactly. And, oh, yeah. That's right. Exactly. Okay. But like the point of the matter is that like, okay, I think they're taking for granted what we forgot. Like, and that's right. the thing. Because the the scenes that they're showing her in, they've been showing her in again and again, is that like, look, you are weak. What do you do now? You are weak. What right. do you do now? But yeah, but we forgot when you were strong. Right. You know what I mean? We kind of forgot yeah. when you were like capable and, and resistant and like wanting to run away. But I mean, and that's something that they kind of have to revisit. They have to kind of like, well, what, do you, what are you making up for? Right. <laughs> like, right. You keep saying you need to make up for things. Like, well, remind us. Well, what was it again? Right. <laughs> yeah. Give us a hint. I mean, the show does a really good job of, or tries to really do a good job for everybody else but her. And I think that's been kind of like their 
you know, their weakness. Yeah, like she's kind of like the um, what do you call it? Um, the weak, the weakest link. Mm. I would say. Well, she at least she appears to be. She appears to if be at least the better. way right. Right. the way that they're portraying her is not in a light that's like their their strongest player you know right so it's like okay well all right 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 and and if not for like us going hey wait a minute wait she's not supposed to be this week she's not she's been vulnerable these past two seasons what what's the deal like you gotta kind of refresh our memories we're americans after all um but <laughs> it's gonna take a really long time for that shoulder to heal too like i don't know when oh, we're gonna oh, yeah. yeah yeah when right. is she gonna be back at at her top game it's gonna yeah, be a the, long time and they're supposed to she couldn't feel her fingers yeah there's yeah. supposed to be a point to all that too like the whole yeah. point is to kind of say oh you can't be who you were before now what right and now but like we're so confused about what she was before that okay how are we supposed to care all this is saying to me is that she's weak and that's a that's right. a problem it's something i kind of wanted to, that's why i brought it up look there's yeah. no doubt i think we can all agree her acting i when they pulled the thing i was like wow she's on yeah. another level but yeah. that was yeah. an that was, awesome moment yeah. yeah yeah and and even like walking back to the the truck stop after she was walking away for the walkers you know like that was but, pretty intense yeah but that did bother me because i was like what in the world are you doing outside oh she's fucking drugged <laughs> up that's why she's out there oh yeah. just, that that drove me crazy i'm like why is she outside but you're right yeah like impulse control meds. by the way yeah i just i right. instant i i believe that i was let it out loud let that go okay and, like and i just love she's and by the way it's her she's trying to shoot with her left hand mm -hmm. right. and with every shot that they're showing they're trying to show her as being completely hamstrung you know like completely right mm -hmm. but again it's, if you don't bring up what it was she was before like the kind of person she was before nobody's how do you expect people to care or understand and especially people who walked on like Johnny come lately with just season four or right. maybe even just season five you know yeah. if, if we didn't know any better she would be the weakest link and you know she would have been gone right. from the shit from fear I really soon. thought she was going to be gone after the first episode oh god I mean, <laughs> like you like um after the first episode of season five not like the very episode ever yeah <laughs> I did too I was like mm, oh, she, she might not be dead. long for this yeah. <laughs> yeah but you know but I know better that's the fact of the matter is I think it, her being injured and hamstrung and all these things it's the same as morgan no stick right episode two that stick is gone guys you, uh, you want to write that was heartbreaking go that right was. ahead and riot but that's gone now <laughs> totally no, i mean it's gone baby i get it i get it it makes sense but it was still hard to watch there's a I think theme here make another one yeah i mean i i'm, I'm with you i'm 100 yeah. percent with you but at the same time right. i'm kind of like i think i'm here to see what's good because that's the thing what do you do when your arm is when your right shoulder is completely out of commission you're no mm -hmm. longer a soldier now you have to be something else morgan you have no stick now what are you going to be this whole mm -hmm. like the the theme is all like this was your right. mission you're going to keep trying at this you want to be crazy you're going to keep doing the <laughs> things the way you did before have at it that's going to be your demise you got to try something different now yeah like mm -hmm. in alicia Morgan said it was going to be hard exactly <laughs> well i guess this we is didn't, hard we did not take <laughs> anything into account <laughs> i mean everybody like you could see it with john i don't june not yet i right. I, I don't see what's up with her yet but john is definitely we're starting to get the same vibes that he got last season with strand you know when he was stranded yeah. on that little mm -hmm. island with the uh alligator cap. yeah <laughs> which is kind of cool actually I mean, no offense cool. some people might have thought it was a little I too campy that. but no, well, awesome. it was a little cheesy <laughs> yeah yeah but i think that's the thing you can't get away with this stuff in twd <laughs> you can win fear like there's right. a there's a little there's a lot more plausible deniability people would be like there was there was no alligator in the comic okay so <laughs> You go, Take fuck offense. you, Gimple. I take offense. <laughs> and that's, you know that's not you. I know it's not me. No. I'm just saying. We, we've been through no. this. We made fun of them together, Carol. My I side. Know. I know. I know. I love when they change stuff up. I don't, you know, no, you think you know, and then they totally switch it up. And I No, I can guys. appreciate it. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think that things, some things just don't translate. Some things just don't translate from yeah, like the written word or the drawing to like the screen. And you have to change right. it. Yeah. yeah. And then, then they change whole things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know yeah yeah Girl. But, <clears throat> shake up the whole <laughs> 
freaking thing. <laughs> yeah. Carol, still here. Sophia, yeah. gone. Right. Um, but I do want to kind of get back to John because I, I do, there's something going on there. And even in the second episode, you kind of see it again with um, right. when they're talking about the kids and whether or not they'll be able to get them on their side. Mm -hmm. And you see it in his face. There's something in his face being like, okay, I'll believe you because I'll believe you because you're getting me there, like in my head. But mm -hmm. like, if you weren't here, I would say I've given up hope on them. I've given on hope maybe on hel helping anybody. Like he's he's on the line. He's mm -hmm. not doing too well. And I think that's like, and again, it's like there's Luciana, there's Alicia, there's Morgan now without a stick. Um, that there, <laughs> these characters are being pushed right. to their to the mm -hmm. to the line. And which which is again, if we go back to to Dwight, I mean, he's gonna be in the same spot you know what i mean he's gonna be in the same spot as our other characters so he's mm. he's perfectly in line for them moving forward with him you know what i mean right so right. i think how does that dynamic change now you know what i mean mm. and now we've got daniel possibly flying in to save Which... them maybe in the next episode yeah i mean just just to kind of bring it there for a second like what? madison flies in <laughs> <laughs> we never I saw a body i heard never you're all on the radio <laughs> you guys talk real loud Man, yeah. Hers is the only death I will accept without seeing a body. Really? No, I can't accept Please. it. I, I'll force myself to accept <laughs> it. Please. Yeah. Uh, I love when, by the way, Nisa's just like jumping from different chats. It's like she, I'm going to go to YouTube and see who's on there. It's like, hey guys, what's up? Danielle, what? That's cool. She's the coolest. Anyway, I just had to say that out loud. Um, yeah, but Madison. I love Nisa. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I'm with, I'm with you, Rachel. Actually, like, I mean, until, of course, if there's no, unless there's a body, of course, right. But at the yeah. same time, there's value in accepting the fact that she's gone because now you can really f look. If she wasn't gone, we wouldn't be as distraught as we are at Leisha State. Like the fact that she's putting, like, the second episode said it more than the first, even though the first kind of said enough. Because she's obviously <laughs> capable, you know? Oh, Double yeah. kill. Assisted mm -hmm. kill. Mm -hmm. Like, boom, boom, boom. She literally is like clear Morgan. It's like, I know. She's and I almost think there. That. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's intense. Why does she feel so much responsibility for everyone's safety? Why is that her job? Why uh, they're all capable of mm -hmm. fighting and right. taking care of themselves? Why is it on her? Oh, it's irony. Or maybe just taking after him. <laughs> That's I mean, is it just thing. her? Right in her head. In That's her. the <laughs> irony. Because if you remember season three, she's in even season four. She spent a lot of time fighting with Madison, like especially near the end of season yeah. three. Yeah, she spent a lot of time telling Madison, "You got to clue us in. You can't be running." some shit behind the scenes with Troy Otto and and even Big Otto like uh, what was his name again uh, not Troy but the, the dad uh, and dad <laughs> <laughs> I forget that I forget the older Otto who was on Deadwood who, which I'm watching now dude um, yeah yeah but um yeah you can't be a minute you gotta clue us in you gotta tell us the truth and she finally tells the backstory of how her right. father their father died blah 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 but um and then you see a little bit of that in season four as well there, and she is bringing Alicia in and she does become stronger as a result mm -hmm. of being clued in but then like you know I, I think seeing how hard madison worked to kind of get the stadium up and running to to do the things that she did all throughout the zombie apocalypse like like i think she she's in a position where she can finally understand how hard it was for madison to not you know to not clue her in and to kind of take care of everybody it's right. exactly like you guys are saying dude all these guys are capable why aren't you seeing it jeremiah yeah jeremiah Otto. thank you <laughs> it just came <laughs> nice but yeah, I mean, and it, it puts you in, puts them in an interesting place, you know, like that's, Just, and I yeah, think that's the extra hard. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that yeah. puts Alicia in a, in a unique place, different from Morgan. Right. Is that Alicia, you girl, you've been there before, you know what right. this is about, you know? So yeah, she's on the line. Oh man. Yeah. Losing Nick and Alicia, uh, Nick, Nick and Madison. And that, that kind of brings me back to Strand though. Cause that whole interaction with him and Daniel, how many of you were shitting bricks, <laughs> but also laughing at the same time? Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, all of that. <laughs> who would have thought? Like, okay, think from before. Like, you knew he was going to be on the show. How did you, did you think their interaction would go the way it did on the show? I did not. I thought it was going to be way worse. I did too. I didn't think he would be so civil with them. I did yeah. not think that he would let him into that compound and walk him around. And <laughs> I thought he'd kick his ass for sure. Right. 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 Well, what did you think? Not Carol? kill him. But just. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. No. No. Of course not, Gillen. <laughs> it's not his contract. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think, Carol? Like, or do you have like a frame of reference? To, is you know? Um, 
mean, it was cool to see. I always like seeing older characters like kind of be brought back. That's always kind of like a, a nice little enjoyment. Like um, Madison? No, I'm kidding. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I am I'm not holding my breath on that one. <laughs> I, I I even though there's no body, I'm 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 letting that ship sail. No, but... remember, remember when there's when people were saying Daniel Sharman, Troy Otto was gonna be back? Yeah, that was odd. That was that weird. Was, that was real weird. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I assumed it was like so the question really is like, why is Daniel Salazar so I don't, I'm not gonna say open minded, but like he's so do you think that it's possible that he is entertaining the fact that people can change essentially? I, Essentially, I mean, who does he live with? Anybody in that place? So he says he inherited it. Yeah, he said he inherited it. I mean, meaning Mm -hmm, whoever's it is, it's not mine. Yeah. Do you think it was Madison's? Yes. That'd be interesting. (laughs) Lay that groundwork. But he did ask if she was alive. So Mm. maybe, maybe maybe that's what he was told to say. It's a far stretch, but maybe. (laughs) I was wondering how long I could keep that up. Uh, but there's it is odd like if some, if the last interaction that daniel had was strand shooting him in the face why would he keep him alive in that instance right i'm not saying i call bullshit i'm not saying yeah. that at all but i think it's just a very yeah. interesting thing about daniel this guy's like right. a murder from down under like right like what keeps him ticking how is he he's like morgan how is he still alive like right. i don't i don't die can't die <laughs> he doesn't die yep. he doesn't die and i he's, tried he's been burned he, alive that didn't right? kill him. And he's funny as fuck still, too. <laughs> he licks his own asshole. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> oh, well. okay. Well, I have to make one more remark because this is I'm this is just me. I'm not a huge pet person. But man, the internet. They're just they're just a little like more cat, please. I'm like, okay, I get it, but like can we have more substance? Like, no, we want more casts. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was intrigued by that. I'm not gonna lie. On the on the I internet was... or or no, on the show. Was, on the show, was... I'm fine. But I'm like, yeah, I was watching the show and I was like, oh, that's nice. And I started thinking to myself, oh, I wonder how well the cats are doing in general during the apocalypse. Like, I just could like my mind just kind of went off on a tangent thinking about mm-hmm. cats and how they would cope. They could definitely oh. outrun them. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. that wasn't my, that's in, in your response to the cats. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it kind of brings you back to the deer in the opening shot too. Like I, in a way I was almost surprised that like deer can exist or like, like right. game animals and stuff like that. Right. Like how do animals fare in the apocalypse? We don't see many of them. We saw those pack of dogs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> following yeah. Negan. Very uh, scattered. I mean, like domestic pets. Is that what? Maybe ex, ex domestic pets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But like domesticated animals, do they right. remain domesticated? Uh, they're, 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 Become feral. Well, it's not only feral, but like their their patterns change too. We've seen that right. in, in the beginning of The Walking Dead and also in Fear of the Walking Dead, how the birds kind of change their migration patterns. Hmm. What typically in groups are now separate, like the grackle. There are things that happen on the show that that indicate that like, okay, humans are an interesting part of the animal world. Like when that shit goes down, things start to shake up. Hmm. So I, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. But the fact that you can still have a domesticated cat in this apocalypse isn't, I mean, I guess it's a little interesting but like like when there's when people on like on twitter are saying like i'm all about this more skid mark and i just love the fact that they say skid mark like all the time yeah. please i want more skid mark i'm like do you <laughs> but anytime anytime that we see pe- that we can see like a pet during the apocalypse i feel like everybody loves it like i mean it's like daryl and dog you know yeah. people are like yeah. no 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 something can't happen to dog right, yeah. right. right. nope that would be the only reason I don't want to see animals on the show is because there's a then there's a potential the attachment, right? Yeah, there's yes. a potential for them to get eaten. I would rather see a person get well, eaten at, yes. than an animal. Look at Absolutely, Shiva. and that drives me up. The oh, wall, that was heartbreaking. By the way. That makes me <laughs> I, crazy. Shiva's oh death was heartbreaking. That, yeah, I mean, all see. Like, here's the thing. My thing is all deaths are heartbreaking, but yeah. I have a, mm. I'm partial to people. I'm, <laughs> You're partial to people. I'm partial oh. to people. <laughs> I'm on team cool. people. People. <laughs> okay. People. I I just have a week like to me it's like I, I I'm triggered by the defenseless and to me like animals and like kids are the defenseless like fair enough yeah. so that is what triggers me like the same reason why and like when when the whispers were like at the gates and they and that female whisper put the baby like on the ground oh. I was like 
okay, this is this is going to, please do not go there. <laughs> yes, yes. And I was like, please, let's not go there. You know, like, and I, in my logical mind, I knew like they probably, they're, they're gonna, the baby will be saved. But in my mind, I was like, but also there was a little part of me that was like, oh, please, dear God, let's not go there, <laughs> you know? Because that's the thing. It's like when it comes to that kind of stuff or like, you know, animals, what was the name of the horse? Was it Buttons, the horse? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. God, that was sad. And Darryl, yeah. Darryl, yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, it just hurts my heart. But, you know, <laughs> like a human being, it's like, well, you know. You know, we got too many <laughs> but, of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, but I mean, it's like. No, tell me more because. <laughs> I you can bullshit. Yourself. I'm on team people, people. <laughs> no, it's always a tragedy. No, always. I know. I, I see what you mean. I, I find that like that attitude and this is this is how this is so, why it's so strange to kind of I find this conversation fascinating. Mm-hmm. But like the, I think part of it is like this weird holdover because we we do see that humans like are capable mm-hmm. of like the most cruelty or whatever. Right. And, and on the other hand, there is something to be said about the impression that like, let's say the concept of original sin kind of has on people's minds like okay humans were born into this world the further along we're in the less we give a shit there was like the louis ck bit of like you know like oh when you turn 30 it's like oh he's 30 oh it's cool when you turn 40 everybody just oh 40 yes new 30 when you turn 50 nobody gives a shit nobody (laughs) gives a shit (laughs) the older you like until you turn like 90 and then you're like wow you made it this far wow i thought you were dead you know like that (laughs) You know what I mean? Like they just to check on you. <laughs> wow. wow, good on hundred. Whoa. <laughs> Who wants to break the Guinness Book of World Records? <laughs> you do. <laughs> so but then like yeah, it's so in the Walking Dead universe is like it's people, they cause the most problems, they are the Walking Dead, blah blah blah. So I can see why people would be more sympathetic to animals. They didn't do nothing wrong. It's not it's their pe- fault. It's people that made yeah. the virus. <laughs> yeah. Animals are just surviving. They're just surviving right. as they typically do. The that's chaos all. that's going on in the human world, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I'm giving you the points on that one. I'm still on Team PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm in this world. If I maybe I was in maybe if I was in no, if I was in the zombie apocalypse, I'd still I'd probably be even more Team PayPal. I'd be like, okay, look, hey, I'm gonna Team- eat you. Exactly. <laughs> Skidmark, you're now my food. Oh, that sounds terrible. Um, <laughs> eat Skidmark. I mean. <laughs> I came down to that. I mean, I'd have to. That's see. different. But it's yeah. just the name Skidmark. I'm eating Skidmark. I wouldn't call it that. I'd call yeah. it dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I would actually give it a name. I would honor it. <laughs> see, that's the thing. Like, I would honor it with its name. Everybody enjoy Skidmark. Say thank you. What was yeah. that goat's name? Tabitha? Oh, Tabitha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, poor Tabitha. Oh, t- yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <Poor Tabitha. laughs> <laughs> oh man you guys. but there is an honor and like there are people that believe like you know when they have to like kill their prey for survival purposes for eating like, that they're honor honoring them, yeah. yeah they're yeah. they're properly honoring like you know their prey because it's that this prey is providing them nourishment that they need i mean at least that's what they always say yeah, yeah. right by the way i wasn't even going to bring this up but i'm glad i did now <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what, what they, they always say that on Naked and Afraid. Yeah. Did you ever see that show on Discovery? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they always say I've that. I've only watched two, but it's, it is kind of, it's, I've it's seen interesting, like but it's also brutal. <laughs> it's like season seven and eight of The Walking Dead. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is brutal. I've seen hundreds of episodes. It's like torture porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Like hundreds of episodes. Like I'm already like, okay, this is good to know. These are the things that you should need. <laughs> Eddie, we need to go back to Target. <laughs> Some shit that we need and we need to talk about. No, you know what always gets people to tap out? What's the, uh, what is that? The insects, bug bites. Oh, okay. mm. yeah. I was going to say exposure, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is the that is the big killer. Was yeah, it not I'd like- be out of there as soon as I saw a bug. <laughs> <laughs> was it not in later seasons that like people wised up to that, by the way? Like people started, like that one item that they get is like- Well, from- you can, well, some people, like some people are smart about it and they basically would bring like netting because you could use it to like get prey, like fish, you know, Sweet. from lakes and stuff, but also use it as a shield, you yeah. know, when you sleep. Wow. Smart. We're learning They're all things sleep. that I keep in my bank of mine. <laughs> I, I bet you, by the way, you and Chris could probably have a whole episode on like zombie prep, by the way, because I know that 
No, I'm serious. Like BMNY started on like really on, on, on zombie apocalypse, uh, zombie no uh, readiness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's hysterical. Yeah, because yeah, I no mean, kidding. you guys all know that I have my go bag like in the I closet. Know. <laughs> Like Nisa right now is telling me all the stuff that she has ready and for her pets to keep her pets safe, by the way. Yeah, I've like, like, I, I remember like my, like Eddie and like my mom looked at me like I was crazy. One day I came out of like the bedroom and I was like, look, if anything ever happens, you go into the closet and you take that bag. <laughs> <laughs> they just like, look, they were like watching TV on the couch. They're like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm just telling you in case. I'm yeah, Jared, I know her. you're listening on Instagram. So you take some notes right now. Right. <laughs> you and Ashley will compare. Are you doing enough, buddy? Right. Do you have your go bag? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I also live in Florida with hurricanes, though. That's and mosquitoes. Kind of and swamp country. And pythons and alligators. Alligators and Your so- python population is increasing, by the way. And pythons eat alligators. They do. They are there. Don't look on don't look on the No, internet. I'm not gonna look it up. Don't no. Google it. I don't it's know. I don't want to see any of that. No, I don't want to see any of that. It's enough about that alligator. Like, well, you saw the thing I posted, the alligator that broke into that person's house and got into their right. wine. Not cool. Oh. <laughs> not, not cool, bro. <laughs> not cool. Yo, bro, bro, get, get out, bro. <laughs> You're in the wrong house. <laughs> bro. Um, oh, my God. By the way, Jared says everyone for themselves. <laughs> yeah. He would. That, that you guys will last forever. Guys. <laughs> He she went. She went to Jared. She, she pulled the wrong move. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, okay. Let's let's talk about the kids. Now that we've talked about animals, let's talk about the thing we hate the most: is kids in the apocalypse. What I yeah, need to know what you creepy. think in general. Like I was so thrown in there. I hope they bring them back for a purpose. Yeah, I agree. Although I'm, I'm, I'm kind of marveling at the idea of the uh, of the idea of them that they bring up in the second episode. Like they're not in the second episode at all, and yet they're no. such right. a topic of conversation right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know but what do you think has happened to them like because in the second episode there are indications that they came from a place that was hard fought and not only that people had died there right obviously from radiation exposure because of the burnt bodies and we find out because of grace who we haven't talked about yet but we know we've all watched the episode so we're here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what do you think happened (laughs) It's kind of interesting, this whole backdrop of, of the, in terms of this kind of like reactor and radiation and everything. It's just, it's very interesting to me. I'm not sure, you know, necessarily like if that plays a role in it or what, or it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where they're going with it though, but yeah. it's interesting. Mm. It's very Chernobyl. Yeah. Well, b- before it was Chernobyl, by the way, it wasn't even production yet. Was think, it not? No, no. Fear, mm. fear was in production before Chernobyl was a... Well, it must have been an idea, but it wasn't in production yet. So. Mm. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Mm. It was purely incidental. Actually, somebody asked that at the Q&A for the premiere at the IFC Center that I went to. Mm. And they were like, yeah, no, that was a thing we had that was going to be in the production. So it was purely coincidence. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. And they get to kind of play that out. But I, yeah, I mean, obviously, so I, do you think that maybe part of that is the big bad? Like, do you think the big I think bad? So. I think that there is a connection. I would, I, that's, that's my feeling on it, but I don't know what that big bad is. I don't know if the big bad is separate from this whole radiation thing. If right. the radiation is just an environmental issue that they have to deal with and contend with, like the way you're talking about, like, Oh, Texas is the, this environment that they're dealing with and right. it's like they're they right. happen to have come across an area where unfortunately you had this kind of reactor situation that happened and it is a radioactive zone so you have to contend with that but that is a separate issue from this other entity yeah i don't know Mm. Well, I mean, could it not be possible that maybe the big bad of, of this season, and I think, are we all deciding all the way, by the way, that Logan is not going to be the big bad necessarily? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. So, so good. We're on the same page then. But I'm, so that aside, I feel like I need to jump right into this theory that I have because okay. I think the, bi- the big bad has something to do with Sherry. Okay. Sherry. Okay. It's based on something, it's based on something that you said about her character in The Walking Dead, which is obviously not in The Walking Dead comic book, which is obviously not coming to fruition. It, I, in my mind, I just don't feel like okay. the stories diverge so far. Right. But you mentioned her as being kind of like, uh, almost like Negan-esque, right? Yes. In she's terms a leader. Of, yeah. She's a leader. Okay. Right. So I'm thinking, cause, so that kind of stuck in my head. And what I was thinking was like, 
she if she is part of what this big bad group is like maybe she was even a part of the reactor team and right. maybe maybe half of the reactor team split away from grace because she did say something about like the problem was me like i didn't realize right. that cities were falling right. and maybe some of her team did right and that's why it fell and maybe those people kind of went on and became and like part of me thinks that these people are going to be kind of radioactive as well like mm-hmm. whatever's going on it's yeah. gotten to their heads a little bit because that's a lot that was a lot of guts yeah you know what i mean so yeah. you think they're just living with the radiation i mean it would be slowly killing them right right uh, probably uh-huh. yeah and okay. and then you have a character like grace who uh, you have a character like grace and you have these people who are probably on the same playing field like on the mm-hmm. same mm-hmm. mortality rate and right. yet Gr- grace is choosing to kind of plug up the hole and, and deal with the words so the world can actually heal like okay mm-hmm. with these zombies running around the world has no chance maybe this whole other group mm-hmm. is kind of like yeah we're on the same timetable and we want to fuck shit up mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we want to scare people we want to take their resources we want to live life to the to its extremes mm-hmm. yeah i just it, with these two these two different characters having the same mortality rate you, you get one doing one one to the other but then sherry's part of the bad group hmm. or maybe she joins up with the bad group so maybe she doesn't have that mortality rate but she's still kind of along for the ride hmm. right I could, I could see her being part of the group that's you know stringing them all up and doing mm-hmm. the hanging right. heads and stuff and i could see i could see her being part of that right she maybe didn't... that's how you connect dwight I mean, in terms of the gets... crossover that dwight is like still searching for her and they you know that's and that's how he finds out about her like through them and that she's this now she's on the opposite side that he's yeah gonna be on. what are they gonna do mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah how do, how do they get her out of it because i mean she, what does she want out of it does right. she want right. out of it does does Dwight right. become is that a pull for Dwight right mm-hmm. yeah I mean like she when we leave Sherry like in the original se- in, in The Walking Dead oh my god can you imagine can you imagine when we refer to The Walking Dead as the original series anyway <laughs> that's interesting to me actually I, I don't know maybe they maybe they have big plans I don't know but um she isn't she doesn't really leave us on good terms like she's not really exactly a straight arrow no on the show no she's think- never been like a, a straight arrow she's always been you get glimmers but not much no Mm-mm. so like it, it perfectly lines up with this kind of challenge now and mm-hmm. that's kind of why i bring her up too like i, I think something's so, something's there something's rife for her to be a part of that group and then i would love to see it i think it'd be interesting to see yeah um i mean i, I definitely feel like we're gonna see sherry again and fear would be a good platform to play that out that story of dwight and sherry for sure yeah there's now there's way more room to play that out. yeah do mm-hmm. they, I, I apparently they don't play that out in the comic as much i think right no it's almost but a foregone the, conclusion <laughs> but that's the thing with the comic though like i feel like the comic um I don't know. They they kind of rush certain things. I mean, you know, Abraham's death death was so like sudden, anticlimactic, and sudden. Right. In the comic. Rachel's like, I'll say. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm laughing at Sherry's death in the comics. I mean, it yeah. was like, I just stared at it for a few seconds. Yeah, like, really? Was like, that, that's how it ends. So, <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's just so sudden. Like the deaths, not yeah. all the deaths, but I mean that. Yeah, that was another one that I was like, all right, well, which okay. again, like, okay, I, there's so much divergence now that now there's yeah. meaning to Dwight. There's meaning to sherry there's right. meaning to morgan and and carol mm-hmm. there's so there's like there are yeah. themes that they will repeat from the comic but i just don't think it's going to be a for the same character and b i mean to move the story along obviously but right. Right. i mean mm-hmm. on the one hand all bets are off but on the other hand it's like don't be too sure that <laughs> that mm-hmm. the character in the comic is going to end up dead yeah yeah, yeah. not necessarily no okay. you know, yeah you don't know when they're gonna go with the comic or yeah. you're off they're gonna go with god <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. they love to fake us out. Which side of the road are they going to take? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. We're almost hitting up on the two-hour mark, but there. I do want to bring up a little bit of grace because uh, best opening line ever: "Take off your clothes, all of them." <laughs> all of them. Yeah, I know. I was like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so what did you? So what did you think on that note then about her telling him to remove his wedding ring and clean underneath it, and that moment where he's like oh, looking yeah. at his band like and all that like he really hasn't removed that wedding ring but which we saw in the like, trailer by the way it yep. almost looked like he said wedding ring like what are you talking about forgot it he kind there. of forgot about it yeah. Yeah, like he almost yeah. kind of forgot about it that it was even there i mean i'll yeah. be honest i forget about it too it's true it's right. just it's kind of a part of me now yeah you know? did yeah. we see him put it back on good question i think so i almost want 
I almost wondered if, if he was going to leave it off after that. And I tried paying attention, but I didn't see it after that. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to be like really watching for it the next episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you asked for, by the way, you asked for more humor and then the don't mess with Texas t-shirt. Right. Funny and such that a serious fun. character. Yeah. yeah, it was yes. yeah. I, that, that was pretty. awesome. Momo. <laughs> it's like they're trying to make the serious character on the show look like a dumbass. I love it. Well, love because it. he's such a straight man that it works. You know, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. can you imagine getting away with that in The Walking Dead? Again, no. Well, I will well, say Eugenia for lovers. Sure. Yes. Yeah, and that's Abra- true. Well, and what Abra- was that? I don't know. That was Eugene's shirt. That was it. Eugene. Way back. Right. But well, yes, like yeah. you have to go back. Like Abraham and Eugene had amazing dialogue. I mean, the, the, I'm sure there's some sort of YouTube hit parade of Abraham and Eugene dialogue <laughs> because they had some. This quick. Right. I mean, they had some oh, stellar that moments. That was Glenn. Yeah. That was yeah. Glenn. But still, but still. Yeah. yeah. Still a good moment. But it's that not even the fact that one character is gone. Like, okay, but you can find a way. Like, you could find a way that Daryl's funny, or you could find a way that whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just seemed like the yeah, show Tara got. Tara was funny too. Yeah. Right. But the show got Tara really got dark. But even Tara lost her sense of humor at some point. And then right. obviously, season. Look, season nine is kind of like. I'm not saying it's an anomaly, but it's like. Okay, it started bringing back, you know, some of the humor aspects, even though we're dealing with, like, say, the whispers. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. But, like, here we are in Fear the Walking Dead. We're only five seasons in. There was humor throughout the... Because of Strand and some of his right. just straight... Oh, yeah. Like, he's like a straight man that isn't a straight man. He talks kind of funny. <laughs> right. In, in some way. Like, he's just so... He has this kind of, like, almost put-on austere kind of character. Mm-hmm. This con man character. That, mm-hmm. yeah, he sounds, like, unbelievable. He does things <laughs> that are a little outrageous. Yeah. You know? Like... Yeah. drinking champagne while the abigail burns like he's just right. kind of he's funny in that kind of like in a dark way like sunglasses while you know shooting at zombies who are already dead you right know? it's just crazy <laughs> anyway but i don't know i just kind of want to bring that out there but like what are your impressions of grace though like what how, where do you think this character falls in do you think this character i mean obviously she has a shelf life but do you think that she will be kind of a character that'll remain as long as possible? I mean, I can't imagine that they introduced her to just kind of be a throwaway. I don't I think at least right. the whole season. At least right. the season. Right. I think Morgan's yeah. going to catch feelings for her. Ooh. So. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to die. And then she's going to oh. die. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. A hundred percent. Because that's, you can't be happy. It's not. Pull the ticket <laughs> naked. You have yeah. to open the door to <laughs> possibilities and then have them <laughs> shut in your face. Face. She told yes. him to get naked. The wedding <laughs> ring removal. I was like, it's true. Mm-hmm. A lot of foreshadowing. So I not he like, and Sarah, right? Okay. <laughs> I was like, Momo, I see where Momo, this is get going. in bed. <laughs> I was like, I see where this is going. All right. And I was like, all right, I can see this. I don't know. I almost thought like, like maybe he and Alicia. I know I flirted with this idea that he and Alicia might have something. Nah. Oh, no. Him and Grace. Him and Grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. An age difference. Yeah. Yeah, but no. also. I nah, <laughs> I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. No, I mean, I, I can't, but like, uh, if I almost kind of like force myself to, because they, <laughs> you shouldn't force so, it. Well, like, you don't know what I mean? Like, because you don't want to see it because obviously the, the age difference, right? But that's no, not it just strange. Make sense. It just doesn't make no. sense. Seems more like a father daughter relationship. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What about Madison and and Morgan sitting in a tree? Uh, more strange yeah. than anything. <laughs> Like, I mean, just hypothetically. No, Morgan and Grace. When I saw this episode, I was like, yeah, these two are getting together. And yeah. then she's going to die. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like, yeah. I think that's the weird thing about radiation is that, like, I, when is your shelf life if you're exposed to, like, that many alpha emitters, as she said? Right, right. Like, no. she doesn't really know. No. You know, she that's the really other thing. Know. Yeah. No. I mean, mm. wh- I think all of us kind of had, see, here's the thing. At the end of the last season, we, we all kind of had this impression, like, oh, yeah, Morgan, he's going to be fine. He wiped the words off of his head, blah, blah, blah. I think we, he's finally turned a corner. I think that all of us also simultaneously thought, oh, I think there's going to, I don't think he quite completely turned the corner. Like, th- I think there's a, it was a part right. of us that was kind of like, you wanted to believe it more than you felt like it actually was. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm starting to feel like with this thing, whatever's going on with Grace, whether it becomes romantic or not, I feel mm-hmm. like that will help you, that will help him turn that corner finally. It's happening. They're getting together. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I but you know so. what I mean? I'm, I'm saying, do you yeah. think this is going to be the thing that heals more? Sure. 
it'll him. make him a better man. Yeah. I, and yeah. I think I feel a lot more comfortable saying that he's okay. hundred percent. Right. Yeah. I hope so. Because yeah. right now it seems like he's ready to to die trying to help people. And yeah, which is not let the people around him die too, just to maybe save somebody. Yeah. So, it's more of Alicia, really. But well, I, I mean, Morgan's just there telling her it's not supposed to be easy, you know, helping people and we can't stop. And, you know, yeah, Log- Logan screwed us over, but we still need to help the next person. They right, might screw right. us over too, but we're still going to help the person after that. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's really funny that outside of June, whom we really don't have too much of a gauge of, except for like her inter- interactions with John. But outside mm. of June and Morgan, like those two characters have it the most together. Oddly, in a world where you would think, like in last during last season, we thought these two were the least put together characters. June right. was all over the goddamn map, right? And Morgan yeah. was almost gone okay. right but here yeah. we're, we're in this kind of like this bizarre world mm-hmm. like this reversal world where alicia's the worst off um, right you know and then in a world where, where morgan is actually like way more in, together in the head than everybody else mm-hmm. i just find that interesting how's that how that's kind of reversed john's up shit's creek luciana checked <laughs> out leash uh, althea the person who we thought would be who and this is another question i want to ask and i and I, I might as well just get into that we bizarre world settled <laughs> Althea, the one thing we were betting on was that she would have, mm-hmm. uh, we would see more of her backstory. But it looks like that backstory was robbed from her because all these people, all these people are missing or dead. Mm. And so, right. except for one, which is Daniel Salazar. Right. But, but what do you? So first of all, the first question I have is, do you think we'll see any of her backstory? I think so. I don't think she's gone for good. Well, no, her backstory. But that's the that's where the second question comes in. Okay. Do you think what do you think is going to happen to her? Mm, I mean, it's early long term. term. I guess over the course of the season. Oh, well, I mean, we'll we'll get her back. That's what we do. Right. <laughs> 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 we do. Will yeah. we? I think well, so. Yeah, she'll be I rescued. So. Yeah, I think so. And I that'll so. be our introduction to whatever this group is. Mm, yeah. I'm Say hi to sure. Sherry. I'm not too sure. I don't know. Well, the the uh, the people who took Althea are the ones like in the in the suits. I assume the the super. What am I trying to say? Commonwealth <laughs> suits. The outfits. Yes, yeah, the commonwealth. yeah. The uniforms, like the right? Suit. Mm-hmm. Uniform. That's the word I was going for. Um, yeah. <laughs> You'd think it was late. Um, yeah, I, wait, right? It's not twelve thirty in the morning right now. Uh, <laughs> but I, I I assumed those people took her, right? Not right. the and the, and and I also assume that that's a separate group from the right. Walker Guts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right, I would. Yeah. I, okay. I think we're all on that same page. Yeah, yep. for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, the the Walker yeah, guts we'll people, back. the big bad is what we'll call them. The big bad seems completely I, different than the common. I don't know though. New I, world order or whatever. Yeah, um, new world order. Right. One of them's gonna end up being more long term. One of them we're gonna solve early on. Yeah, agreed. Mm, agreed. Yeah. I don't know which one yet. Though. I, I feel like we might not even see Althea until at least the mid mid season premiere. Wow. That's really? what I feel like. You really? I'd, I'd give her at least to the finale i mean or the like the like the, the break mid- finale. Finale. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before the break i would say no but the only way i'm basing this off of, <laughs> sorry i'm basing <laughs> i'm basing this off of the tra- the the trailers and all the promo materials because mm-hmm. from then on all you see is her like on a rock face and a river almost drowning she's not with mm. anybody and so i'm 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 a little concerned this actually brings me to my theory i know i know we haven't really covered too much i mean we covered the bulk of what's really important but my big ass theory is and i spoke with nisa about this and i don't think she's here anymore but what if this is last first of all what if a this is last fe- season of fear of the walking dead and what if the only survivor from fear of the walking dead and then not a matter that everybody's dead or everybody's alive maybe most people are dead what if this has all been built around the idea that this is is Althea's last story like that that these are the last people that she saw alive and then she moves on to either the movie or the that'd be epic you know what yeah, I mean that would there's be, like it's yeah. sad it's, it's sad, as sad. It, it is very sad but it would be a very epic story right but she gets to I tell would, this story about the she gets to, she lives on I and mean, is able to carry on this story right 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 like what's That's, your yeah. what's your story was that first episode <laughs> right and I talked yeah. to somebody yeah. about this I'm like that would be really sad but I think I would be all right it would be that. poetic and and then she gets to get she gets to move on. Was yeah. that? I feel like I would pick somebody else to no. tell this. Alicia 100%. would tell Althea's story. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a big Alicia that. fan, though. Oh so hell yeah, that's that's my position. I finally started watching <laughs> the 100 because I didn't know. it was Oh, out. did you? Yeah, no. I, I, I love the 100. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I, but you know the fact that it's Althea to me is is almost like um, you know it's like poetic justice. It's like it's the last short story she'll ever get to tell, right? Because she's no longer that person who stands on the sidelines. Like now she's a part of the world because of this really tragic story that okay. she was finally involved in, right? Right? Mm-hmm. Like the one story that she decided to step into, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's the or story got that drug into, yeah. <laughs> well, but she she went along with it though. That's the thing. Right. Like I think all yeah. the regrets. Remember that box of tapes that spills out like way in the beginning and she just yeah. freaks out about it because mm-hmm. she's keeping it special because she wasn't involved she regretted not helping and then she finally did get involved and blah mm-hmm. but I think it's yeah. ironic because then she earns the right to be a part of the movie and like she earns the right to become and then what is she, who is she as a person in this part of the commonwealth or the whatever is she right. like, is she become part of rick is she the voice on the radio at the end of season mm-hmm. nine you know that's mm-hmm. what really like turns my crank <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. like, that's like what gets me going it's like wow this could be the beginning of the end it could very well be yeah i mean that doesn't say that like maybe morgan and dwight don't hop along for the ride i'm right not saying i'm not a complete monster but maybe and alicia co- don't don't kill alicia don't kill my girl alicia <laughs> but maybe <laughs> That's that's what makes it sad. The whole like, Clark family just gone. But it's like, re- <laughs> but it's really really sad. But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, if it helps a character move on finally from fear to The Walking Dead or the movies, yeah. I could find a way to be okay with it because there's some poetry in it. You know, like there's some weird kind of poetry conclusion. Hmm. You know, sure. like closure. You know, like this like, weird mm, yeah. cover, yeah. end page. You know, and then this is how they lived, and this is how they this is how they lived. Period. Yeah. Not how well, they they decided to end Fear the Walking Dead, right. it would make sense to right, kill right, off the right. whole family. Like right. that family was on that right. show and that's it. Right. right. And this is this is their does make sense, guys. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fine. I'm not well, okay I'll with it. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I do think we're gonna see more of Wendell and Sarah in the next episode. Finally. Like a little bit more. Finally, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll yeah. see more development from the Logan side of things? Because part of me doesn't think we will. Kind of until, until later. Yeah. 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 If well, he ends up being an ally, we probably won't see him again until we need help. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Which is what, part of what I was trying to get out before, too. Like, I do think it's going to be like the ally turned to friend thing. Right. Yeah. The common yeah. enemy kind of thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, help possible. us now or else they're coming for you next. So, or, yeah, like, there's a big threat. Mm-hmm. Or the Commonwealth mm-hmm. could be the, the binding glue. If it's the Commonwealth, they're definitely not winning that fight. No, yeah, no, we're going to need truckers. I don't know if they're going to win. Well, maybe it's not a matter of winning, too. Maybe it's maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just a matter of gathering resources to kind of yeah. live outside that bubble. You know, whatever it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe that's what's exhausting Texas, by the way. That's exhausting <laughs> the resources in Texas is like this presence. Like, okay, that's yeah. why people are so beaten down. That's why right. not, there's nothing available anywhere. Because this group obviously they took, done? they took uh, Alicia's weapons that her, <laughs> she was preparing for Doomsday is what John Dory said. Um, <laughs> or for D-Day. D-Day. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, you know, obviously the same thing. Um, sneak peeks. So it, it looks like they will be going in the perimeter that the scary signs say not to Cross. The scary gut line yeah. says not to cross. <laughs> and by the way, how like gross and creepy were the the sounds of the heads chomping? Ah, oh, mostly near the end. Oh, it was so awesome. <laughs> it, it was, but it would like was so jarring. I was like, yeah. oh god, you could just hear them chomping away. Ooh. I was waiting for one to fall. I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what if that was a thing too? Like, what if that was well, what yeah. their intention was? Maybe that is That's what I was waiting for. Oh and your your reaction would be to catch it, right? Because something's <laughs> oh. falling, and you want to oh, hot potatoes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. like they could be like batter up. <laughs> Right. Yeah, oh. that'd be awesome. Yes. Be yes. <laughs> uh, God, it's like a video game. Like literally, like the things that fall from the ceiling. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but not. It's this is real life. <laughs> this is real. Yeah, this is a, it's real life. Oh, that can kill you. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent real life. Um, we will we will see John and June get challenged because it looks like they're it looks like the center of this perimeter of whatever this perimeter is protecting is like a an old west ghost town. <laughs> How cool! So cool, considering he's a gunslinger. Things yeah, like, uh, added bonus. I mean, I hope we get to see some tricks again. Another example of Texas think, being a character. I just you know? think his character is so cool too. I think John yeah. is awesome. I'm in the right place. Bye, boom, boom, boom. Yep. <laughs> yep. 100%. Ooh. 
Um, right, right, right. And then we will see Dwight. And that's uh, basically the that's basically the extent of the sneak peeks. And then that beginning thing with actions speaking louder than words. I don't know what she's talking about. Luciana to was it Alicia? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's words and then there's actions. We chose action. That's what she said, kind of. Right. I wonder mm. which, what that means, though. Like, I wonder what they're alluding to. And she's still obviously very drugged up. <laughs> I was going to say, that might be part of it. I think maybe we're moving her on to this kind of comic relief <laughs> kind of character. <laughs> I'm not hating it, actually. I, I mean, if you can move her off of like the helpless animal kind of thing to this kind of... This is her role for the rest of the mid-season. <laughs> like, just being a drugged up... <laughs> out of commission character like what do you, what somebody, now somebody get her an accordion it's like the right? mr magoo yeah, the, like if you're old enough to remember mr magoo that's like her character yeah. well, i don't hate on Aww. that it's fine with me it's a strong <laughs> female lead right there you know you can be comic relief too <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, fight the power. Um, <laughs> I'm right here. What? Anyway, um, all right. So with that, everybody, I think we'll call it a night, a night in shining armor. Here's what we're trying to do. Um, we discussed it, and the polls are in, and it looks like we are going to try covering The Walking Dead. Sorry, Fear the Walking Dead just after the episode airs. So tune in after Fear the Walking Dead on Sunday nights for most of you. Obviously, a lot of you guys are in different markets. Sorry. But you can always catch the replay on either Facebook or YouTube or catch the audio podcast, which is usually shorter because of concatenation and editing and whatnot. Uh, anyway, you can always comment. You know, I'm always there answering. So yes, it's all you. Very good about that. I mean, you guys, if you, if you go on Facebook, I think everybody everybody will chime in and, and go on to the YouTubes. We all we all know the channel. We all can keep uh, keep track. But um, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, tune in live after the show on Sunday night. Uh, this, this is going to be uh, obviously nine. This is going to be 10, 10 p.m. Eastern Eastern U.S. time. So uh, join in, like, subscribe, comment if you can't. Um, and you know what? As always, just turn on the notifications whenever. Um, turn on the notifications so you get immediately notified when we go live on either Facebook or in, uh, or Instagram or um, or YouTube. I said YouTube already, right? Facebook. Anyway, and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. All right, do right. Uh, let's say good night, everybody. Until Adios. then, good night. See night. you on Sunday night. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.